I am Sebastian. Today we are going to discuss about trafficking of protein to endoplasmic reticulum. So endoplasmic reticulum was discovered in 1945 by a scientist called Albert Claude. A Belgian scientist, he discovered endoplasmic reticulum as one of the most intricate cell a part of a cell, cell organelle. You know that endoplasmic reticulum uh, has its extension from the cell membrane to the nucleus. And you are also aware that there are two portions in the endoplasmic reticulum. One is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, other one is the rough endoplasmic reticulum where the proteins are being synthesized, where the ribosomes will be bound. A cell faces number of challenges in trans transporting a protein which is synthesized in the exterior to the endoplasmic reticulum. Now, in the three challenges that it faces, first of all, right protein has to be identified to be transported inside. And number two, after identification, if the correct translocation must occur, and this translocation must ensure that no other molecules, small molecules, ions are not allowed to come inside the endoplasmic reticulum. And finally, once the protein is brought inside, the protein must fold itself into a functional protein and it should be located at the right place. So these are the three challenges any nascent secretory protein faces. Now, in order to understand trafficking into endoplasmic reticulum, first and foremost, we require endoplasmic reticulum for studies. Isolating endoplasmic reticulum is a challenging job. Why it is a challenging job? Because if you look at the electron micrographic picture of an endoplasmic reticulum, it has such a labyrinth, intricate structure, and it is interconnected with the cycloskeleton, it is so difficult to purify endoplasmic reticulum. What is the other option? Scientists thought about a wonderful plan and that plan is, they realized that if this endoplasmic reticulum, let us draw the structure of the endoplasmic reticulum. So, if this endoplasmic reticulum, um, these are the rough ones, so you will find um, the ribosomes attached to it, okay, and these are the smooth endoplasmic reticulums where there are no ribosomes attached. And what they have done is they have homogenized it. Homogenized. So once it is homogenized, then it was understood that these endoplasmic reticulums have the tendency to assemble themselves into small units and these small units also will have ribosomes attached some of them will have ribosomes and this does not have a ribosome attached so this is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum and this is a rough endoplasmic reticulum and these small vesicles are known as microsomes so they were able to form microsomes by homogenizing endoplasmic reticulum now, you are aware that in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, because of its association with the uh, ribosomes, the molecular weight is going to be higher in comparison to the molecular weight of the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And there is a technique which can very easily separate, uh, separate two substances with a different molecular weight. That is a density gradient centrifugation. In a density gradient centrifugation, and this portion will be a high density, and this will have a low density solution. Maybe sucrose is one of the commonly used density gradient material. So what is done in this case is a density gradient is prepared, and this whole thing is transferred here. So this has got rough endoplasmic reticulums with these dots and a smooth endoplasmic reticulum without a dot. Over a period of time, after centrifugation, one can see 
if the low density smooth endoplasmic reticulums are getting assembled here and if the high density endoplasmic reticulums are getting assembled here. So this was one of the easiest way to separate or identify or purify endoplasmic reticulum for carrying out studies related to protein trafficking. What is important for us is this and microsomes they are equivalent to in the structure of endoplasmic reticulum. This is what is important for us to know. So once this basic experiment was carried out now they were interested in knowing where exactly is the protein is, uh, is produced? Is it secreted inside the endoplasmic reticulum or it is secreted in the cytosolic side? So this question they had to answer. So in order to answer that question, let us formulate the hypothesis that uh, if the proteins are secreted inside, inside in the lumen. So this is going to be our hypothesis. Our hypothesis is proteins are secreted inside the lumen. So this is what we are going to either prove or disprove. In order to check whether a protein is produced or secreted inside the lumen or not, they have opted for in the pancreatic acinar cells. Why acinar cells were selected? That is because the acinar cells produce proteins in large quantity and in many varieties they produce. So that was the purpose of choosing acinar cells. Now they carried out an experiment which is called the pulse chase experiment. So what is done in pulse chase experiment is first of all radio label amino acids. Now this radio label amino acids are so this is radio label amino acids. Now these radio labeled amino acids are allowed to incubate with the cells, this acinar cells that is in a cell free medium. So therefore you have the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cell free medium allowed to incubate for some time. So during that process what will happen is new proteins are synthesized. So new protein will be synthesized during the period of incubation. So once, so therefore, if the radio labeled amino acids will be incorporated into the new protein. Once it is incorporated, now you homogenize. So once you homogenize, you know that uh, you will get microsomes. Okay. So in the microsomes that we get, if the microsomes are here, if the that will have ribosomes attached, okay, ribosomes attached, here another ribosome and the microsomes that we get, our hypothesis says if the newly produced protein is inside, that is what it says and this is what we need to prove, we want to check if the newly produced this protein is inside the microsome or not. So what was done, very interesting experiment, so what they did was this now divided into two and that was treated with the protease enzyme. So you know what will happen with the protease enzyme? It will degrade the proteins. But in one of the tubes, they have added a detergent. So a mild detergent, this is a plasma membrane and the mild detergent will disturb the plasma membrane and you will have a structure like this, if the mild detergent has disturbed the plasma membrane, ribosome may be still attached to that. And if the protein is also protein is inside, but the protein can come out. When the protein comes out, this protease will act on the protein and degrade that into small fractions. And that will also degrade, the protease also will get degraded. So small fractions will be formed. So this is to show, this we can check whether the protein is inside or not. Now what happens to the next one, in the next microsome? In the next microsome, it is treated only with the proteases. 
Now, the protease is not able to get inside the microsome and degrade. And in such a case, you will have no, if the is in, protein is inside, you will not have any product forming when you estimate the protein using a gel electrophoresis, etc. This experiment proved that if the newly formed protein is indeed inside the microsome, it is secreted into the microsome, which is equivalent to the endoplasmic reticulum, lumen of the endoplasmic reticulum. So this is what was proved through the first experiment. That brings a second question. If the second question is, if it is inside the microsome, if inside the lumen, then how it gets inside the lumen? How it is transported to the lumen? That is the second question. And this question was answered by a very famous scientist that is Gunder Blobel. So Blobel in 1970s, he came up with the hypothesis known as the signal hypothesis. For the signal hypothesis, he was awarded the Nobel Prize uh, in 1999. 1999. There were many more other people who contributed towards signal hypothesis. What is the signal hypothesis saying? It says a protein, a secretory protein will have a sequence at the end terminus and this sequence, this signal sequence uh, is important for directing a protein to a particular place. This is the hypothesis uh, Blobel proposed. So, if the secretory proteins must have a signal sequence, they began investigating it. They did a very simple experiment. So, what was the experiment which they carried out? Three setup. In one setup, what they have done is uh, you have a cell free extract, a cell free extract, uh, in that everything is here, so this is in vitro studies, in vitro studies, everything is there, but no endoplasmic reticulums, ribosomes are there, whatever required for synthesizing protein is there, so it will synthesize uh, the protein based on the mRNA which is supplied, a protein is synthesized, okay? Now, uh, this protein, according to our hypothesis, this protein also will have the signal attached. Then the second experiment, this is the first experiment. In the second experiment is in vivo studies. In vivo studies, the real cell is taken, a particular mRNA being uh, is targeted. So this mRNA is being synthesized, a secretory, MR, a secretory protein is synthesized based on this mRNA. So that also will produce a protein, but this protein, since it is secreted inside the endoplasmic reticulum, the lumen, it will not have either signal because the signal would be detached in order to insert this protein in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. So, if the molecular weight of this protein should be slightly lower than the molecular weight of this. This will have an additional molecular weight because of the signal. A third experiment was carried out. In the third experiment, again an in vitro study, but in this in vitro study, everything was provided like the case of the first one, but endoplasmic reticular microsomes were also provided. When microsomes are there, this protein must be targeted and they must get inside. That was the logic. So that also produced a protein and the signals are detached. Carry out a very simple electrophoresis. In the electrophoresis, what you will see, what was observed, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three. 
this you know that this will have high molecular weight protein and this will have low molecular weight protein what they observed number one separated here number two and three separated here that is to show these two molecular weights were the same which means both did not have the signal sequence if the signals must have been removed when they were translocated inside in the microsomes so this was a very simple experiment carried out in order to prove that there is a signal involved in transporting proteins look at the in the beauty of such a simple experiments that is revealing wonderful thought and giving a noble prize